Hi there and welcome to another episode of Crypto Time. My name's Antonio Schillingford and I'm here with James Coughlin. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you mate. Hello guys, thanks for watching again. Good, good, good. Um, we're both portfolio managers here at BitStocks and through this segment, we're going to be touching on two large names, one being Facebook and the other one being... Samsung, my friend, Samsung. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, so they both hit headline news and I think it would be a bit rude if we didn't actually cover them. So if you'd like, I'll give you the baton. Do you want to tuck through first? Yeah, let's kick into it. So again, as always, please do not misconstrue this as investment advice. Always do your own due diligence before getting involved in any investment. So yeah, Samsung. Um, really interesting one. Samsung have kicked off with their new uh, smartphone device, which is going to be the S10, um, and they're offering an app on it, which is going to support cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, first point to this was very interesting because you know Samsung are a major player within the kind of tech space, um, and I would say they're probably number two in terms of smartphones at this moment in time. Um, they're a little bit more kind of tech centric. Oh, number one. Number one. There's always going to be this silly argument between Samsung owners and, and, and Apple owners in terms of the telephones, but we all know that number one has always been iPhone because it's simple, and number two has been a little bit more on the techie side for those that prefer it along the Samsung side. So I think, it, to be honest with you, suits quite nicely that they've jumped in and they've gone for, obviously, a wallet um, and ensuring that people can secure it properly. But I think the one thing that's kind of um, very prudent to mention at this point is it's not with Bitcoin. Um, and I think I found that quite a surprise. Yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of a surprise. I, I, I need to look into it properly as well. Um, but it, I believe it's built on uh, ERC-20 token. Exactly that. And I think the whole idea yeah, behind platform. it. Yeah, I think the whole idea behind it was that if we look at, for example, what telephones are now known for, um, something that I know you've mentioned uh, previously is that, look, Telephones were invented so we can make phone calls. However, what we use them for today is something totally different. We use all these different applications, pictures, all these different things that we can do. Um, ERC-20 based tokens are based around apps. So it kind of makes sense that they were trying to go down that route. Now, me and you could pick Ethereum apart right now. That's not what this conversation is about. Um, and I think that what we'll see is that transition into other coin providers being able to be supported on the actual Samsung device itself. And I think that's only going to be a natural progression. But look, it's a start and it's the right place to start, in my opinion. So how have they started is the interesting point. So um, just on a bit of paperwork here, I've got some interesting names that have been involved. So you've got Crypto Gaming Platform Engine. Um, you've got Beauty Community Cosme. You've got Crypto Collectibles Crypto Kitties, um, something I know a lot of our listeners are going to be familiar with. Um, love it uh, or like it. Um, it's an interesting one. Um, for those that don't know, it's pretty much top trumps as I used to play as a child and I'm sure you probably did as well. Um, I was used to playing it with supercars, saying that, for example, a Ferrari had more power than a Ford that was out there and I would win the competition. It works very much the same in Crypto yeah. Kitties. And with Crypto Kitties, when it actually got introduced into the ecosystem, um, it pretty much jarred up the Ethereum network. So a simple game like a Top Trump-esque game um, completely jarred the network. Um, if you're thinking about it, the amount of users that a company like Samson actually has, if they do properly adopt it and everyone actually starts using it, everyone that has a Samsung phone actually starts using their crypto wallets, of course, the rate of adoption is going to be a lot slower than that. But if that was to happen straight away, what do you think is going to happen to the network again? It's just going to stagnate and stop the same thing we're used to. But for me, um, you know, I actually don't mind conversations like this. The yeah. reason I don't mind it is because there's coins out there that can do it right, such mm -hmm. as BSV, which are going to be able to do all those things under one wrapper that you see, for example, from Bitcoin, from Ethereum and all these different coins. So if we can encompass that, all I see, for example, um, from Ethereum stagnating in terms of the network is actually just a fantastic advertisement for coins that we actually believe are really, truly in this space for the right reason reasons and doing the right things. So I think that's an interesting one. Um, just a couple more points around it. Um, they actually launched this phone on the 8th of March. Um, we've seen a huge amount of traction of people actually downloading these uh, wallets from the App Store. Um, there's also some fantastic conversations also going on with Google um, as they very much work in conjunction with Samsung around a lot of the stuff in terms of Google, Apple Pay, all these different things that are out there. But when it comes to Google Pay, that would be another fantastic step, uh, which looks like it's coming through back to as me and, um, and uh, Stephen went through on our last podcast. Um, so yeah, interesting. So I think, to be honest with you, um, that nicely covers um, what's been happening with Samsung at the moment. Um, I think it's nice really if we tuck into uh, Facebook now. Yeah, um, just before that as well, it, it will be interesting to see what Apple's response is really going to be. Um, because 
we're seeing it with countries as well. They're starting to get involved in crypto. And we were having this conversation yesterday about BRIC nations, about them adopting cryptocurrencies to pretty much leapfrog them ahead of some of these larger countries that have big institutions. And so if they have big institutions and big organizations, it takes them a very long time to actually make decisions and make movements because everything needs to be cross-verified. So many hoops that you have to jump through and yeah. all the kind of rigmarole that you go through is just yeah. frustrating, I know. Exactly. So it's gonna, it will be, it's interesting now because we're seeing a lot of these companies as well try and leapfrog other companies by adopting this kind of technology. So, I think that it's going to force Apple to actually have a response as well, just depending on the adoption rate on how many people actually start accepting these wallets. Um, and a little bit off topic, but um, do you see the Trump uh, situation with um, <laughs> Tim Apple? We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly that. Um, to be honest with you, um, you know, just looking at that from a kind of real linear point of view, um, to me, it was either it was either done on purpose, right? Yeah. Um, or it was done by accident. If it was done by accident, it's because Trump sees him as the man behind Apple, right? Yeah. Um, if it was done on purpose, you know, Trump makes me laugh. I've got to yeah. say, he makes me laugh. I, I, I do think it was definitely at least a little jab, um, <laughs> but it was a very, very funny one. Yeah. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. So just tucking straight into Facebook now. Facebook, they've tried to visit the crypto space before. This was in 2010. They launched something called uh, Facebook credits. What Facebook credits was quite simply meant to do is all the services that you actually currently pay for on the Facebook platform, this credit was actually designed to just pay for those services. Mm -hmm. So very much a very simple, simple utility coin, um, but they're now starting to actually come back into the space and they're trying to be a little bit more aggressive with it. So they actually hired a guy called David Marcus. He's the former PayPal president and he's actually been heading up their crypto division and just in, in terms of the technology itself. So what they're trying to launch now, there's a lot of questions around it, but what a lot of people do seem to be very confident on is that it's gonna be a stable coin we're starting to see a lot more of these stable coins get injected into the space because they do hold a very important role right now. And what their role is, is quite simply because we experience this because we deal with it near enough every single day. But from getting your fiat currency that is currently held within your bank into something like Bitcoin or BSV or Ethereum, it isn't an easy job. Um, they do try and stop your transactions. I think it was about six months ago now, maybe a little bit more, um, where Credit Suisse, were, they were literally shutting down all USD transfers into any cryptocurrency. They were blocking it and they were doing it as a clearing house. And I know there, there were some other names involved in that as well. It wasn't just Credit Suisse. Yeah, and I think that that is um, an interesting one because if we look at it and we look at the names that were trying to stop these payments, it was all the big names. Um, I mean, one, for example, uh, which I was familiar with and I was a part of was the JP Morgan stuff. Same thing, seeing it blocked. Major, major banks and major institutions are looking to kind of stifle and stop this in some sort of way. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And what a stable coin does, because it isn't actually a cryptocurrency, um, it, it doesn't hold those same properties, it's just a dollar peg. So it's a lot easier to get my fiat currency into a stable coin and then from a stable coin into the crypto space. So it's very much acting like a bit of a bridge at the moment. So a bit of a plaster on the bullet wound scenario. In the future, it won't be needed because when crypto is more widely accepted, we won't have those issues anymore. So it plays a role right now. Now, with stable coins, like I was saying, we're starting to see a lot of these companies actually start um, pushing forward and start releasing these to the point where over the past, what, two months? I think I've read up on about 20 different stable coins from these companies launching them. And that's ridiculous. And yeah, and it's not just, for example, US dollar stable coins now. Um, there's talk of gold stable coins. There's talk of uh, property backed stable coins. Mm -hmm. There's all these different ideas that people have got that are out there. Um, and I think it leads us nicely into um, one of the points that I wanted to make around Facebook as well, which is about the blockchain itself. Um, again, 
I don't see why people, um, especially large actors like Facebook, are trying to create their own blockchain to do this. There's no need for it, right? We've already got coins that are out there that can actually operate what they're trying to achieve in a much more efficient, quicker and faster way through a blockchain that's already working. And not only that, but it's actually got a hell of a lot of mining wear behind it. There's a lot of actual network support, which you won't have from, for example, a standalone blockchain. I just think the community now starts to start really coming together in some sort of respects and saying to ourselves, look, this works, this is okay. We're going to operate our company off of the back of, say, for example, a color coin with SV or something like that. Yeah. There's definitely avenues that people could take at the moment, which they aren't. Yeah. And I just don't understand this whole push for private their own it's all yeah. ours type thing it doesn't make sense yeah um i agree with that and what they don't realize is first of all if they were to just launch their coin on top of bsv it is a much smarter decision because first of all it's going to be a lot cheaper it's not going to be a private chain so they're not going to have to just completely maintain it from the ground up i'm talking about its power its security etc um because the token economics on BSV will look after that and the sheer mining power that will also be there will look after that as well. So if they just took that view and actually started working with, um, I know it is a bit confusing at the moment because of 4,000 plus different cryptocurrencies, it makes it very hard for these corporate clients to pick one. But once all of that clears out, they'll be easily be able to just pick one and say, look, we can build on top of that cuts their costs greatly um, because they don't have to actually build their own foundations and they can just launch on top of that. It makes complete sense. But tying this back into what we were talking about at the beginning um, in terms of these companies now using these as mechanisms to leapfrog other companies um, and countries doing the exact same thing. Uh, that is exactly what I think Facebook is doing right now. Someone done the figures on what the expected revenue from this. And of course, this is a very um, bullish and um, dramatic quotation. But Facebook's revenue in 2018 was uh, $55 billion. Okay. If they do incorporate a stable coin to their ecosystem, it's meant to generate and increase their revenue by $19 billion. That is a lot of money. And of course, that is a very dramatic uh, quotation, but that's a revenue increase of 34%. Why would you not look at that? Yep. Right, I think that's a great place to really wrap things up now. Um, we've been through some really interesting subjects, especially around Facebook and Samsung. And as usual, we digress into different parts as we go along. Um, guys, please obviously hit up the notification section of YouTube. Um, please like if you're enjoying what you're seeing. And also, if you have the opportunity, we've got a whole load of host of content on YouTube at this moment in time that you can run through. Yeah, and we just launched our interview that um, Michael Hudson, our CEO, done with Jimmy from Enchain, I strongly recommend you guys to head over there and just give that a watch. It's on iTunes, YouTube, our website, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And yeah, I think that ties things up nicely. Thanks guys for watching.